Hello future millionaires, this is Aztec and this is the CSC. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Bitcoin charts today. Um, a lot of people are asking, hey Aztec, what's going on? Um, what do I think is going to happen in the short term? And it has been a very crazy past couple of weeks here. So we'll go ahead and just shoot right into this, kind of breeze over this chart. So um, just to let everyone know, the last video I made was right in this area, it was on the 27th, and you can see the date down here below, right here. Um, and I kind of gave a bullish and bearish kind of uh, scenario here, and it was very general, but on Telegram, I did say here, this was on Tuesday as you can see, I think the charts need relief, the indicators on the BTC chart, or day chart, look like they want to up, up, and away. So. The reason I'm showing you this, guys, is because I want to let you know that, first of all, I like to hang out on the Cardano Trading um, uh, Telegram channel. So if you want to hang out with me, if you want to uh, ask me questions kind of like day to day, if you want to be able to get a hold of me for my opinion on uh, Cardano and uh, Bitcoin charts, kind of just pick my brain, whatever, that's a good place to find me. Um, you know, you can go ahead and at me there. On the telegram and I kind of give my opinion on things there you know I'm not giving financial advice I'm just giving you giving people my opinion but I did call this guys I called this area I said you know we we did look like we wanted to move up and we moved up so um, you know at this point what's going on um, what we're seeing here um, is that we did have this kind of slight retracement down to about uh, the four about 4100 area and then we bounced up here and what I think is interesting you know we're on the four hour chart here this uh, the MACD is starting to like decline it looks like it's kind of scooping downward at this point the RSI has hit uh, 64 and then uh, recently 63 and it's you know pointing downward so with the with this small overall trend right here you know we're moving up and the rsi is starting to kind of go down um you know kind of create this slight um bearish divergence so it it looks like there could be um a movement to the downside but of course this is not financial advice guys this is just what i'm looking at another thing here is the volume which is a little hard to see let's go ahead and um, let's brighten it up a bit uh, we'll just go to the green and just for this video we'll make it um, bright green and you can see this volume that I'm doing just the green just so you can see is starting to decline even though we're moving up so um, you know, with declining volume, usually there's going to be some kind of break upward or downward. But with the indicators being, uh, for the first time, you know, on this four-hour chart, being kind of in a normal high area, um, and us kind of hitting, um, you know, 64 and now 63 RSI as two little tops here. You know, it's kind of indicating that the volume and the uh, indicators are suggesting that we might have a retracement. So that's just what the charts are suggesting. That may not happen. I mean, we have a lot of, um, you know, really great things that are going on. So, um, you know, anything could happen here. You know, we could also break up and hit this next um, EMA here which is the 100 day moving average on the four hour chart um, because we have wicked off this um, 50 day moving average here so uh, you know this this could just be kind of like a little continuation up down up down you know we haven't actually broken out of this upward trend at this point you know if we came down and we hit um, closer to the 4050 area you know we kind of broke under this upward movement then that would be very bearish and we could say that we um, you know could possibly break down lower or this upward trend um, you know could look a lot more bearish but that's that's basically the gist of it guys we we want to see where this um, goes and of course I'll go ahead and keep um, watching everything 
Another thing that's really interesting is, you know, in past videos I've talked about the CBOE Bitcoin futures expiration dates, and we do have an expiration date coming up on November 30th. So that's tomorrow. And generally on the days that the uh, CBOE Bitcoin futures expire, we do see um, downward movement. So, um, you know, just throwing that out there, not trying to create FUD, but, um, you know, we have to, like I said, we look at our technical analysis, we look at our fundamentals, and we try to get a general idea. At least, you know, what I'm doing at this point is just setting stop losses. I just want to be safe to at least um, keep as much profit as I can at this point. But um, at this point, it's, you know, we're not breaking out of this upward trend. So, you know, anything could happen. Now, I did want to go ahead and just go over a lot of general news because, I mean, the general news is just awesome today. And it's been awesome, of course, with upward movements in the markets. Um, the news looks really great. And they, they talk about a lot of really, you know, great things usually in these times. Uh, you know, if it's a red day, you get all the bad news. But um, basically, I just want to go over this bullish news, even though, uh, you know, there could be a, a retracement, you know, a small retracement uh, soon. Um, we're still very, I know, I'm still bullish on the future of Bitcoin, though the near future, you know, may be kind of mysterious. But uh, this is a kind of a, a new thing that I just uh, found. Uh, it says South Korea to promote cryptocurrency trading following a new bill introduction. So down here it says uh, a bill will be introduced to promote cryptocurrency trading. It would facilitate the promotion of cryptocurrency exchange developments, further proposing that a new committee be established in order to support and promote crypto operations. Now, basically, it says South Korea to allow the promotion and development of cryptocurrency trading in the country. So this is awesome, guys, because um, South Korea is really kind of like behind the United States. It's the second, I would say, it's the second biggest kind of, um, you know, cryptocurrency. They basically have the second biggest amount of money in crypto world so they you know it's really awesome to see that their government is passing a, bu a bill to allow them to trade and you know is pushing them to trade uh, it says here the bill is named digital asset trading promotion act and it's being introduced by a legislator kim sundong so this is really awesome guys because uh, this means that you know the people of South Korea are being pushed to go ahead and, um, you know, hey, go out and trade, have fun, basically, which is awesome. You know, it'd be awesome if uh, the United States uh, would kind of allow a little bit more of uh, trading, maybe less taxes and things like that. But this is really bullish news here. Also, I thought I'd throw this in there, Cardano. Um, it, it kind of made me sad for a second, guys. You know, Cardano is my favorite project, and it's been pushed down recently. And just yesterday or the day before, I noticed I actually was checking Coin Market Cap, and I was like, "Man, where's Cardano going? You know, what, what's going to happen? Is it going to be pushed out of the top 10? And it was pretty crazy. Cardano actually hit 11 for a um, short while, and Monero uh, pulled the 10th spot on Coin Market Cap. And I was like, "Oh man, this is..." This is horrible, you know, um, but Cardano has taken its place back uh, within the top 10, though, you know, I don't really count Tether um, as um, it shouldn't even be on the coin market cap, in my opinion, uh, at least ranked wise here. Um, I, I don't even know how, in my opinion, with all these other stable coins coming up, you know, Tether could really be non-existent, especially with all the FUD and, you know, issues that they've had trying to show that they have the, you know, money backing their currency, their one-to-one, one dollar -one, $1 to one tether kind of scenario, you know, not being able to do that very well. Um, and all these other stable coins coming up that are a lot more, um, basically you can just verify, you know, a lot more with the other 
stable coins. Also, you have um, um, totally totally blanking out here. You have um, uh, Binance basically starting the Pax coin, which is their new stable coin, and uh, it's just it goes goes to show that Tether's superiority could really fall shortly, and that in my opinion, won't be a bearish thing. You know, a lot of people think, oh, if Tether crashes, that's the end of, uh, you know, crypto and the trend and everything. And I'm just flashing back to the charts while we're talking because I want to see where um, where we're going. But anyways, yeah, I mean, I don't think that would be a, a bearish thing because what would really happen is people would be exiting Tether and they more than likely would jump into, you know, other coins and that would lift the market up at least temporarily uh, it might even kind of push the uh, sentiment of the market upward knowing that tether is being replaced by better stable coins and that uh, the money in tether moves to other coins you know so i in my opinion i don't think that's like this horrible thing that tether crashes but anyways also very bullish coming out um, this article saying blockchain oil trading platform backed by shell and bp is now live so this is awesome. You know, I'm just going to be pulling little excerpts of the um, articles here today to kind of tell you what we're talking about, but or what the articles are talking about. I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail with these articles. There are a lot here, but down here it says the blockchain platform is aimed to help trading companies replace paper-based documentation with smart contracts by automating parts of the process. The move is expected to help companies cut costs, reduce errors, and make post-trade processes more efficient. And this is huge. If you've ever worked in, you know, any kind of like Fortune 500, um, for any Fortune 500 company, or uh, in the past, you know, as an example, I worked for General Dynamics, and uh, as as you know, it was a contract, but um, basically. You know, I heard people in the office talking how much money they spend on paper, just paper itself. You know, it's millions and millions of year, uh, millions and millions of dollars that they pay a year just on paper. So, what's interesting is that a lot of these companies nowadays are trying to go paperless, and we can see that they can actually use blockchain to be, you know, part of the uh, paperless kind of route. So, this is awesome to see Shell and BP. Um, you know, using blockchain. Also, Google searches for Bitcoin just hit their highest level since April. This, um, we'll, you know, we'll read this. It says Google's Trend Explorer reveals the weekly number of worldwide searches for the keyword Bitcoin has reached levels not seen since the first week in April. While the exact number of searches occurred so far this week is not clear data from google reveals bitcoin searches in the past three days alone made up 17 percent of its all-time high weekly search volume set from december uh, 17th um, yeah december 23rd of 2017. so this is also extremely interesting um, that people are looking at uh, you know, looking for information on Bitcoin. And of course, I believe it's due to the uh, huge crash that we've had recently. Um, you know, I think a lot of people that left this space are looking and kind of uh, licking their lips and saying, oh man, you know, there's some, you know, should I get back in? Should I get back in? Um, I don't necessarily think this means that everyone is just going to be jumping in right away. Um, you know, a lot of retail investors jump in when the prices jump up, you know, and go higher. Uh, you know, that's that's what created that hyper wave in the, at the end of 2017. So this is good, though. It's good to know that people are looking and, and, and possibly trying to figure out what's going on. And you know that there are some investors, uh, retail investors, that are probably looking to get in and wanting to, to get in. Um, also, it says here, Amazon announces two blockchain-related products, Quantum Ledger and Managed Blockchain. So, um, 
here what I found interesting it says QLDB is a ledger database designed to provide transparent, immutable, and cryptographically verifiable, uh, verifiable log and transactions, which is overseen by a central trusted authority. So again, you know, um, Amazon's joining this whole blockchain thing. You know, Amazon was, was saying for a long time, you know, they didn't, they weren't really wanting to touch blockchain. Um, and you know they didn't have um, too many good things to say about Bitcoin but here they are they are starting to use blockchain and um, again you know here's another huge company saying that they're using it to basically um, you know they're they're cutting down cost and and um, using the technology to make their processes more efficient so this is you know awesome to see Amazon jumping into blockchain, you know, let's see where this goes, you know, will Amazon go further down the blockchain rabbit hole, you know, further news to come. Uh, another thing here, Amazon uh, also, uh, this article says, um, Amazon makes a big move into blockchain with new AWS service. So this is a service that they're now providing. And it says introducing Amazon Managed Blockchain, which is a fully managed service that makes it easy to create and manage scalable blockchain networks using popular open source frameworks, Hyperledger, Fabric, and Ethereum. And I've talked about Hyperledger in the past. It was uh, I talked about it because Charles was talking about it, and um, uh, Charles Hoskinson. If you're not a Cardano fan, you know, Charles Hoskinson was talking about Hyperledger and the fabric portion of Hyperledger. And uh, just to kind of clarify, you know, what this means here, um, it doesn't, Hyperledger fabric is basically um, a, a group of, of people that, you know, just to oversimplify, they're a group of people that all come together and um, kind of have open source work available for people to obtain so that's what this is talking about when they talk about hyperledger fabric and ethereum it's not saying that they're um, amazon's going to be using like the actual ethereum token they're going to be going through their open source framework so they're going to be working with um, people that are kind of involved in the open source networking kind of area that work on ethereum possibly or are a part of hyperledger the group um, and, and Amazon saying that they're going to be taking uh, in, in working with them to um, find solutions, essentially blocks, blockchain solutions. And also they're, you know, they're introducing this uh, Amazon managed blockchain. So it's a new product essentially saying, um, you know, Amazon's going to be uh, possibly creating, um, you know, blockchains for other people. And, uh, on to further news, uh, it says Goldman Sachs still can't hold crypto on behalf of clients uh, despite growing demand. And I won't go too far into this um, article. Really, what makes me kind of piques my interest about this article is just the fact that Goldman Sachs wants to get into crypto. Um, now, this article is about them not being able to at this point but you know it does show that there's a lot of demand for their uh, you know the people that are are, are um, you know involved in Goldman Sachs their clients essentially are wanting to get into crypto and Goldman Sachs is trying to figure out a way of um, you know being able to provide some type of crypto uh, solution for them so this, this is interesting you know they're not able to do it now but they they want to because there is growing demand so guys this is just more bullish news you know this is the future 2019 is just uh, looking better and better and here we go more 2019 news nasdaq are looking to launch bitcoin futures on its exchange according to sources so the two sources here are uh, two sources familiar with the matter note that nasdaq are keen to introduce uh, bitcoin futures the expectation of this coming into effect is not anticipated until Q1 of 2019. NASDAQ stock market 
uh, are exploring Bitcoin futures to be listed uh, on its exchange suggestions as early as 2019 being reported by Bloomberg, citing two people that are familiar with the matter, noting that the organization is anticipating uh, for a sustainable amount of interest despite the recent drop in the market. Now, I mean, this article, you know, the, the wording is obviously a little off, but, the, you know, I did verify this with other articles. I try to use, uh, there's there's a, I, there's a certain type of um, uh, news agency that I, I try not to use. So, um, you know, sometimes I use other um, agencies to, to provide news to you guys. And this is news that I verified in other places but uh, what I find interesting about this is NASDAQ is looking to um, you know they're exploring Bitcoin futures and they're wanting to possibly do this as early as Q1 of next year 2019 uh, as you guys know I've said that I really think that there's going to be a, a nice little turnaround in the market in February maybe the possibly the start of the bull run so um, you know 2019 is just looking more bullish um, every day so this is this is awesome and here you know at the bottom this is something that's been um, kind of quoted in many articles related to this um, topic with NASDAQ it says uh, despite the recent drop in the market so basically you know institutions the overall trend is that institutions are looking to get into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency even though the markets are crashing now that is interesting because um, you know they obviously know a lot more than the average person and even though crypto is falling they're still interested so that's really bullish for the you know for the entire market for hodlers and traders um, you know everyone now also this was a pretty cool article this has been out for a little while but Coinbase launches OTC trading desk in response to client demand. More demand, guys, over-the-counter uh, trading desk um, and more demand. That's just a that's a big, huge keyword. It says here, San Francisco-based cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase has recently launched an over-the-counter trading desk for institutional investors in a move made just reacting to client demand. That's in quotes. They're saying just reacting to client demand. Uh, here's another huge entity that's just reacting to client demand. You know, they, there's so many people uh, with institutional type money that want to get into crypto that have their assets kind of locked up in, um, you know, institutional type um, custodial type um, agencies, and they're not, you know, they, and they want to move some of that money into Bitcoin. So here's here's a, just another article saying. Here they are, you know, they they want in. But of course, kind of finishing up bearishly, um, you know, in the, in the near future, we do have this uh, November 30th um, CME, or sorry, uh, CBOE Bitcoin futures expiration date. So, guys, this is um, very interesting. I like to get a lot of my news from uh, TradingView, guys. Down here in this uh, bottom right-hand corner, they have... They have all kinds of um, articles that you can look at, and you get the articles as they come out. They spit them out here. They tell you nine minutes, 13 minutes ago. Uh, this last one says, Bitcoin's highest ever recovery in about three months with a surge in price and volume. So, I mean, um, it, this is where I get a lot of my my general news from and I do work still with my inner inner circle a lot less than I have in the past I am trying to branch out and I'd really like to start my own kind of uh, inner inner circle and that's that's why I'm trying to shake hands and meet you guys again you know um, I hang out within the uh, the Cardano trading telegram channel so if you want to talk with me hang out with me figure out what's on my mind go ahead and go there and um, you know, we can go in and talk and I can tell you my opinion. I'll never give you guys financial advice. Nothing I talk about is financial advice. Just just my opinion. You know, I'm just a, another guy, a YouTuber. I have been in the space for a long time, but everything's still my opinion. So, um, yeah, uh, again, guys, if you want to hang out, go ahead and um, 
go ahead and uh, add Telegram if you don't have it, because Telegram is a very useful tool to, especially if you're trying to learn. Um, if you just want to talk to other people, bounce off ideas off people, and I mean, it, it's it's a really good tool to have. Um, so you know, um, yeah, come come hang out with me, guys, and uh, give me a like if you kind of like this whole news kind of thing. I don't generally do news news, you know. Um, but tell me what you guys think. Never give up on the future of money. Take it easy.